Afternoon, everybody. Norm! <laughs> How you doing, Norm? What do you know? Not enough. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 funniest sitcom characters of all time. Oh my god! Help! Oh, get him, Wallace! For this list, we're looking at the most hilarious characters from situational comedies. We'll only be looking at live action sitcoms here. Sorry, Homer. Uh, stop! Who's your favorite sitcom star? Let us know in the comments. Number 20, Will Smith, the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. You have the right house. I am Jeffrey, your uncle's butler. Oh, okay, well, uh, cheerio and all that rot tonight. But then you have an opportunity. Bring the horses around, would you? <laughs> it's hard to think of Will Smith as being anything other than a huge Hollywood icon. With the likes of Independence Day and Men in Black under his belt, it can be easy to forget the fact that he started his acting career on television. A chance encounter at a party led to the launch of Smith's career, and one of the most memorable characters of the era. Am I alone in this or didn't none of y'all notice he was white? <laughs> is wrong with Janice? Uh, I'm sorry, did I say white? I meant tall. <laughs> his character Will on The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air is that of a street kid living with his estranged rich family. Combined with a stellar cast, Will is easily one of the funniest guys on TV. Throw in some scenes with his cohort Carlton, and it's no wonder it's all still comedy gold today. <laughs> <laughs> Number 19, Barney Stinson, How I Met Your Mother. Ted may be the focus of the story, but it's often Barney's antics that keep fans coming back for more. This legendary character gave the show some of its best quips and punchlines during its nine year run. Wow, you're an astronaut? I'm actually in a top secret government space program called Secret NASA or SNASA. From Barney's countless adventures derived from his playbook to reciting the bro code, this is a character that often lifts episodes from mere mediocrity to laugh out loud comedy. A bro who calls dibs first has dibs. Oh? Dibs! It's a character that fans never know what to expect from, and that's what makes him so awesome. And come on, who doesn't love seeing Barney cringe whenever Marshall lifts his hand? Oh my god! This is the best Thanksgiving food! <laughs> That's four! Number 18, Baldrick, Blackadder. Do not despair, for I have a cunning plan. Always the servant to Edmund Blackadder, Baldrick has come in many flavors. Despite the revolving versions of the character, he always seems to be lacking in the wardrobe department and could probably use a shower. Despite this, he's been a constant source of comedy since first appearing in The Black Adder in 1983. Well, Rick, I've always been meaning to ask, do you have any ambitions in life apart from the acquisition of turnips? Uh, <laughs> no. So what would you do if I gave you a thousand pounds? I'd get a little turnip of my own. <laughs> from his obsession with turnips to replacing heads with pumpkins, his oddball wit is one that will strike a laugh in many who happen to catch him on the telly. Given that he always seems to have a plan, we're sure a couple of laughs are always part of it. The chances of there being two bullets with my name on them are very small indeed. Yes, it's not the only thing around here that's very small indeed. <laughs> Number 17, Sheldon Cooper, The Big Bang Theory. Penny. Sheldon. Penny. Sheldon. Penny. could have easily been nothing more than the annoying roommate you eventually write off. Yet somehow Sheldon Cooper managed to find a way to make millions of people laugh every week. That humor often centered around the idea that as smart as Sheldon is, he still seems clueless about so many things. As funny as those bits can be, the best Sheldon moments are often seeing his mania in action. Where's the coffee? <laughs> No problem. I'll be back before this banana hits the ground. <laughs> Flash Sheldon, drunk Sheldon, or even over-caffeinated Sheldon put more laughs on the faces of fans than any of the fun facts he's ever spouted off. Bazinga. 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 
Number 16, Moira Rose, Schitt's Creek. I've been gutted. John, I've been stripped of every morsel of pleasure I earned in this life. Given the long history they have as comedic collaborators, it's no surprise that Catherine O'Hara hit comedy gold with Eugene Levy's Schitt's Creek. As Moira, we get to see a character who's lived a life of privilege knocked down a few pegs. That alone has a draw unto itself, but it's also O'Hara's comedy chops that make some of Moira's ridiculous language and mannerisms so funny to watch on screen. It's made even better when we catch both her and her son David together, and we see that that same privilege has passed on through to another generation. Next step is to fold in the cheese. What does that mean? What does fold in the cheese mean? He folds it in. Number 15. Phil Dunphy, Modern Family. I'm the cool dad. That's that's my thing. I'm hip. I, I surf the web. I text. LOL. Laugh out loud. OMG. Oh my god. WTF. Why the face? What father doesn't want to be the cool dad? Phil Dunphy from Modern Family fits the bill perfectly. And in doing so, gives viewers countless chuckles along the way. But it's not just his attempts to be hip around the children that make us laugh. It's Phil's obliviousness to his use of language that often triggers the giggles, or even gives us a cringe or two. You can kiss my wife, you can take her to bed, but you cannot make her laugh. I want to go back. We'll forgive him for being naive, as it's always played for laughs, and just adds to his unique character. Plus, let's not forget his aversion to swearing. Who knew sweet potato fries could be funny? Sweet potato fries! Number 14, Sophia Petrillo, The Golden Girls. Take four elderly women and put them in one house and what do you get? A recipe for comedy. Dorothy, Rose, Blanche, and Sophia gave us countless laughs over the seven years they were on the air. As funny as they all were, we have to pick Sophia for being the prize when it comes to comedic chops. I can understand that. I mean, women like me don't grow on trees. <laughs> Too bad we could use the shade. <laughs> Her countless comebacks, razor-sharp wit, and the ability to tell a great story made her one of the great breakout characters of the era. Picture it. Sicily, 1921. A beautiful young peasant girl saves her lira and takes a trip to Paris, the city of lights. Also, the only place a guy can wear a cape without getting a lot of funny looks. Who doesn't love watching a grandma on TV giving everyone the best laughs? Number 13. Frasier Crane, Frasier. When Frasier first appeared on Cheers, he came off as a bit of an uppity shrink who seemed to have answers for everything, possibly even giving Cliff a run for his money. But when he spun off to his own show, we got to see far more of the character than we could have expected. What did you two kids do last night? Do you, uh, play some games? I mean, well, I mean, board games. <laughs> Not that you were bored or excited. <laughs> Not that I'd know anything, or should, but uh, warm buns, Lane. <laughs> sure, he's a highly intelligent man, but thanks to a killer cast, we got to see how funny Dr. Crane could really be. The countless debates between him and Niles, and even their father, proved to be one of the highest points of comedy on the show. What were you two doing back there? Maris lost her earring at the party last night. Daphne was good enough to crawl under the bed to look for it while I... Yes. <laughs> Searched the credenza. <laughs> Number 12. Winston Schmidt, New Girl. Known merely as Schmidt, this New Girl character started off as not much more than a guy who was always paying the douchebag jar. Hey, Nick. No! Jar, Schmidt, jar! For what? With a bit of an ego, and definitely far too sure of himself, it's hard to see why anyone in the apartment would ever put up with the likes of him. Yet time and time again, you'll find yourself laughing at something Schmidt-related. What we love the most, though, is the Nick and Schmidt comedy duo. Putting the two of them together in some harebrained scheme always brings a roar of laughter. We're talking about conditioner, right? You use it as shampoo? It's for moisture, Nick, not for cleaning. I can't believe, I can't believe we're friends. Give me it back, man. Give you what back? Give me, give me it back. I'm Think about what you're doing I'm right now. squeezing it out of your hair. You're squeezing it out yes, of my hair? I am. Number 11, Tobias Funke. Arrested Development. Being a sufferer of never nude syndrome alone gives Tobias a handful of laughs already. I'll never understand that you can never be nude. I understand more than you'll never know. 
brilliantly played by comedic actor David Cross, Tobias makes us laugh through his mere existence. Between his overt yet unintentional sexual innuendos in his speech and his obsession with acting, he can't help but laugh every time he shows up on screen. And between being convinced he's black or somersaulting anywhere and everywhere, he's a character that you almost feel guilty laughing at. But the hysterics are just so funny you can't help yourself. He's a stark contrast to other characters such as Lucille, but is still a gas to watch. You are a worse psychiatrist than you are a son-in-law, and you will never get work as an actor because you have no talent. Well, if she's not going to say anything, I certainly can't help her. Number 10. Hawkeye Pierce, MASH Even today, MASH still holds the record for the most watched series finale of all time. No one could argue against the fact that Hawkeye played a huge part in what drew viewers in. Well, well, since when did they put a stewardess on this run? <laughs> She's with the USO. Medics thinks it's her appendix. Right down my alley. I wrote the book on the appendix. I even wrote the appendix, but they took that out. Alan Alda's portrayal of the sarcastic, wisecracking, prank-pulling surgeon is undoubtedly the glue that holds the show together. And that's for my ability as a doctor. If you seriously question that, I'm afraid I'll just have to challenge you to a duel. Swords or pistols? I was thinking of specimen bottles at 20 paces. The brilliance of this character is in his ability to perform his job, yet somehow maintain a sense of levity throughout an otherwise nightmare scenario. And through all of that, not only is he hilarious, he also gives the show some of its best dramatic moments as well. Number 9. Leslie Nope, Parks and Recreation Ah, Leslie. Always the perpetual optimist. Even when the general public is yelling at her, or her superior Ron is telling her no, she still sees the world with rose-colored glasses. We're not sure if someone being so chipper all the time should be so funny, but given Amy Poehler's comedic talents, it's no wonder we love Leslie so much. Despite all of that, some of her best moments come from her being less than her normal self. Had not of this watered-down baby formula? Not even close. Not even close. Marvin Clones. Going close. Whether it's participating in a drinking contest at work or wreaking havoc at the library, there's always a laugh to be had. You seem to have a $40 late fee on a book called Mysteries of the Female Orgasm. No, I don't. Yeah, you do. And grab the movie! Go! 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 Pumpkin book jockey! Number 8. Mork. Mork and Mindy. Mork. Good morning, Austin. Orson. You call me Orson to my face, but behind my back you call me Fatso, Rocket Ship Thighs, and Star Tush. You forgot Laser Breath. Uh -huh. Okay, do we even have to explain why Robin Williams was awesome on TV? We're pretty sure it's fair to say that no one would argue about his comedic brilliance. He was a bull in a china shop that was let loose on any set he worked on. Long before he became a mainstay of film comedy, creator Gary Marshall introduced him to the world through Mork and Mindy following the character's debut on Happy Days. What do you do? Do you just uh, use that to scare people with? No, it keeps rain off my head. <laughs> Williams played an alien named Mork who is sent to observe human behavior. Given Williams' uncanny ability to improv, entire sections of the script were often left for him to go on his own, and it always resulted in huge laughs. On Earth, you have natural parents. You see, I'm a test tube baby. <laughs> really? Yes, my father was an eyedropper, the scum. <laughs> Number 7. Jake Peralta, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. I'm not becoming like them. I am them. Hey! What are you doing, weirdo? I'm doing the best speech from Donnie Brasco. Or actually, 10 of me are doing the best speech from Donnie Brasco. What's up? What do NYPD Blue, Hill Street Blues, and Law and & Order have in common? Sure, they're all cop shows, but none of them were comedies. Brooklyn Nine-Nine has given fans countless laughs, and many of those are thanks to Jake Peralta. Also, no more video games because they cause stress and they raise your heart rate. More stress than being a police officer? Jake, I've seen you play Mario Party. Wario cheats! I'm just saying, but Wario cheats is a stupid game. As perhaps one of the most immature cops ever depicted on television, Jake's antics among his peers seem to know no bounds. Throw in countless acts of name-calling and teasing, and you're bound to home in on some great laughs. 
I believe in the power of nicknames. Smile face, senorita swag, kahuna! Oh, yeah. Much like Martin Riggs of Lethal Weapon fame, he's a fine cop once you get past the outer psyche. Number six, Chandler Bing, friends. Hey. Hey. So what happened? Did a forest tick you off? Can you envision a world where Chandler Bing is not one of the main characters of Friends? It's true. Matthew Perry's character was originally supposed to be merely a supporting figure in the show. But thanks to Perry's comedic chops, the show pivoted, and he became a fan favorite. This, this is like a complete nightmare. Oh, I know. This must be so hard. Oh no, two women love me. They're both gorgeous and sexy. My wall is too small for my 50s, and my diamond shoes are too tight. Always ready with a comeback, an aside, or a sarcastic comment, Chandler's jokes often elevate a mediocre episode into one of pure hilarity. Combine that with the obvious chemistry among the cast, and it makes for a memorable character that gives everyone the laugh they needed among friends. You seen Joey? What's the matter? Oh, just this? <laughs> Number five. Larry David, Curb Your Enthusiasm. What's more funny, you or a fictionalized version of yourself? In the case of Larry David, the truth might lie somewhere in the middle. Uh, and then, here's, uh, here's the coup de grace. Uh, you look yeah, at her breasts. Uh, look You're at looking breasts. at my girlfriend's breasts. First of all, breasts. they're not breasts. They're, they're, they're not breasts. Yourself. They're just big chemical balls, okay? They're not breasts. Since Seinfeld's George Costanza was inspired by David, you'd think the real thing would be just as funny. In a case of art imitating life, David took his own persona and created an also funny version of it through Curb Your Enthusiasm. Is there any way I could sit in the aisle and you would want to switch to the middle? Well, I can't switch seats with you. I mean, I, okay. got the, I can't sit in the middle. I'm claustrophobic in there. Larry's complete and total lack of social skills almost compares to that of Sheldon Cooper. Much like Sheldon, it's Larry's view of the world that gives us the best comedic moments. Number four, Archie Bunker. All in the family. Imagine for a moment that Eric Cartman from South Park was a grumpy old man who lived in the 1970s. That would be All in the Family's Archie Bunker. There you go again. Just because something looks a little bit different to you, you have to put a label on it, right? <laughs> well, if the place fits, well. Oh. A working class man, Archie is the epitome of the old dad who doesn't want to change with the times. Carol O'Connor's portrayal of this legendary character gave us countless laughs as he yelled at his wife Edith, berated his son-in-law Meathead, and argued with his daughter Gloria. The jokes are certainly of the era, but at the time, they brought the house down. Archie's no-holds-barred approach was a fountain of laughs that kept flowing even through to the follow-up series, Archie Bunker's Place. What did they learn you? History. How Marco Polo opened trade with China. Richard E. Nixon done that, you're lying. <laughs> Number three, George Costanza, Seinfeld. This is not good. Worlds are colliding. <laughs> George is getting upset. With Seinfeld coming to Netflix, an entirely new generation of people are meeting George Costanza. As a short, overweight, bald man, George is perhaps one of the most unique characters to ever be on television. Based on the show's aforementioned co-creator, Larry David, Costanza's comedy comes from his incessant self-loathing and insecurity. The laughs often originate from seeing a grown man behave in such a childish manner. I don't even drink wine. I drink Pepsi. You can't bring Pepsi. Why not? Because we're adults. You're telling me that wine is better than Pepsi? <laughs> no way wine is better than Pepsi. Whether he's shoving others to escape a fire or being oblivious to inappropriate office behavior, his comedic antics often eclipse that of Jerry's neighbor, Kramer. You have any action at all? No. Do you have any conceivable reason for even getting up in the morning? I like to get the daily news. Number two, Michael Scott, The Office. People say I am the best boss. They go, God, we've never worked in a place like this before. You're hilarious. And you get the best out of us. Um, I think that pretty much sums it up. If there were ever a perfect vessel for Steve Carell, it's Michael Scott. 
Playing the head honcho of the Scranton, Pennsylvania branch of the fictional Dunder Mifflin Office Supply Company, Carell spent seven seasons finding laughs in countless quips and bumblings. Well, it is hard to tell the difference between you guys saying stop because I want you to stop or stop as in stop, you're making me laugh so hard. What you're doing is so funny. You are on a roll. I am busting a gut. Stop. Forever blaming everyone else for his own shortcomings, he's a character that always overestimates his relevance and importance, much like Dwight, which is often what garners the most laughs from viewers. Not only does his character tickle the funny bone, he also gave us one of the most memorable catchphrases of the era. Though he didn't invent it, no one can say that's what she said and not think of Michael from The Office. Wow, that is really hard. You really think you can go all day long? Well, you always left me satisfied and smiling, so... That's what she said! <laughs> Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Sam Malone, Cheers, owned the greatest bar in television history. It's quite a fella, your fiancé. Listen, uh, you don't have to make conversation with me. Nothing personal, but I'm not in the habit of talking with bartenders. I understand. One's trying to move into my neighborhood. Liz Lemon, 30 Rock. She is the heart and soul of 30 Rockefeller Plaza. That guy wanted to buy you a drink. Really? I already have a drink. Do you think you'd buy me mozzarella sticks? Red Foreman, that 70s show. He has no problems telling you as it is. What the hell happened to Bob's hair? <laughs> it beats me. His head looks like a poodle's ass. <laughs> Karen Walker, Will and Grace. A high-pitched sass no one would mess with. Dear Lord, if I'm okay, I promise I will dedicate the rest of my life to serving you. It says here you're fine. <laughs> Fall for it again, God. <laughs> Frank Reynolds. It's always sunny in Philadelphia. We're pretty sure there's a little Louis De Palma in there. Derivative. That I love. I absolutely love. Um... That's just the air conditioner. I want it. It's everything. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Lucy Ricardo. I love Lucy. For a show that only lasted six years, I Love Lucy gave us one of the greatest television characters of all time. Lucy was the queen of comedy for her era. Countless episodes of her antics with Ricky gave way to belly-filled laughter for audiences long after the show ended. From smashing grapes to the memorable conveyor belt scene, there were very few times Lucy didn't give us the chuckles. best example of how physical comedy and raw talent combine to give us the best laughs. This kind of character doesn't come along very often, but we loved Lucy at her best. It's so tasty, too! <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.